Okay, this is something I've been trying to get for a while, the Namco Nejicon controller. As you can see, it uses a twist to simulate driving. If you twist left like this, that's a left turn, and right like this, that's a right turn. It also has analog buttons designed for fine control over accelerate or brake. The one and two buttons here are analog, as well as the left shoulder button. This makes it PlayStation's first analog gamepad. There are 40 supported games, 36 on PlayStation 1 and 4 on PlayStation 2. Standouts include Ridge Racer, Wipeout and Gran Turismo. This is known by many as the best controller for Wipeout. Let's load up a few games and test this out. As a Namco branded controller, it's no surprise that the majority of support comes from Namco first party games, notably the Ridge Racer series. Getting into the gameplay, it immediately hits you just how fun it is to drive with this controller. Power sliding through corners feels great, and you have analog precision to counter steer and snap out of that drift. It's a big improvement versus a digital pad and makes these games feel fresh again. Ridge Racer Revolution, Rage Racer, and Ridge Racer Type 4 all have support and are a blast to play. After Namco, Cygnosis shows up with strong support. Both Wipeout and Destruction Derby games support the Nejicon, that's four games in total. Although Destruction Derby feels a bit oversensitive and twitchy, piloting those anti-grav ships in Wipeout feels great. This is definitely my preferred way to play Wipeout now. Some Sony racers also feature Nejicon support, with Crash Team Racing and Gran Turismo as good examples. The last racer I want to mention is The Need for Speed. This is the first game in the series and it plays nicely with the Nejicon. The cars feel weighty and you get some extra realism that you don't get with a digital pad. Some notes on the controller itself. You can't just use this on any game support has to be built in by the developer. It's even missing buttons, L2, R2 and select, they aren't there. When support is available, the controller is auto detected and the UI is updated to reference the one, two, and A and B versus the traditional PlayStation shapes. Controller calibration and the gameplay feel is different from game to game. Wipeout has, by default, a 180 degrees turn, whereas Ridge Racer has 35 degrees. Some games are sluggish and heavy in steering, while others are very light and twitchy. Thankfully, most games have a calibration tool, so you can dial in the settings that feel right for you. Jumping back to games, there are a few non-racers in the pack. Namco Shooters Galaxian 3 and Xevious 3DG both feature support, but neither of them make use of the twist feature. It's just D-pad, there's no Nejicon advantage here. Air and Ace Combat fare a little better, using the twist mechanic to turn or roll the aircraft. It takes some getting used to, but it works well, definitely an improvement over D-pad aiming. Skipping forward in time to 2000 and the launch of PlayStation 2, Nejicon was down but not out. A few games did ship with support, with Ridge Racer 5 and Wipeout Fusion as two good examples. But by now the DualShock 2 and twin stick controller design was dominant, and it still is today. Only four PlayStation 2 titles saw support, a last hurrah for the controller before fading away. Looking back, I really like this controller. From an era when there was still experimentation with controller design, in some ways it's better than what we have today. If you can get one for cheap, it's definitely worth picking up and enjoying this one-of-a-kind controller. See you next time.